I'm Griffin Campbell, professor of saxophone here at LSU, and I'm here to talk to you about set three etudes for uh, Allstate here in Louisiana. It's numbers 15 and 28, and it's number 28 that's our concern right now. This is in the key of C minor, so there are a ton of accidentals lying around all over the place to worry about, but in this etude, like in number uh, 15, the accidentals are marked very clearly all the way through the bar. And in fact, there are places where there are repeated accidentals, and he goes ahead and marks them for you. So uh, unlike many times in this etude book, Sterling's being nice. Usually he's pretty mean. But in this case, he's being pretty nice. Um, the one thing that you want to be very careful about is the B naturals and B flat. Because this is in C minor, there are very few B flats anywhere in the A2. Uh, it's actually kind of surprising that there are only four, but you need to be sure that you play them when you get to them. Uh, the first of these B flats is in the second bar of the second line in a little descending scale, and the third, second, third, and fourth B flats are all in the third measure of the third line in a little decorated figure. So make sure that you're playing B flats in there and nowhere else will you play a B flat. So stay away from the bis keys and your life should be pretty easy. Um, good, so there's that. Uh, one of the big problems here is articulation and uh, making sure that your articulation actually matches what's on the page. It's either easy to get into a habit of articulation and just tonguing the same way over and over again. And uh, one of the things that Fairling does in these fast etudes is he varies the articulation constantly. So you want to be really sure that you're doing exactly what's on the page. And the way to be sure of that, as I always tell you guys, is to slow down. Slow down, be careful, and play one measure at a time at this really slow tempo. I would recommend starting at half speed, around 60 to the quarter note, or 120 to the eighth note. And if that's too fast for you to be accurate, that's not a problem. All you got to do is slow down some more. Just slow down, and life gets much simpler for the person doing the learning. Um, so, breathing is always of exceptional importance. It doesn't matter what you're playing because, you know, we're wind instruments and if we don't take a breath, we're in deep trouble. One of the big problems with this etude is that he doesn't leave your room to take a breath, ever, except in two very specific places and in one incredibly important place, which is at the very beginning. So before you take, the, take your shot at this etude at speed, and again, I recommend doing it bar by bar, very slowly, in order to learn exactly what you need to do, and then join up two bars, and two, do it two bars at a time, then join up three bars, do it three bars at a time as you get faster. Don't try to go super fast right away. But when the time comes to go fast, and I have to tell you that this tempo marking here, quarter note equals 126, is pretty unreasonable. I don't expect to hear it that fast from uh, students. I don't expect to hear it that fast from me. And if you go listen to the recording that I just made, you'll hear it, it's around maybe one tenth at, the, at its fastest. And that's plenty fast, believe me. Um, especially for the articulation. But it's got to go fast enough so that you can make these phrases in one breath. So tank up, kids. Tank up. Take a really good breath. I need to what you need to feel when you take these good breaths is an expansion here. Not up here, not in your chest, but in your belly. So that when you take these good breaths, there's an expansion here. Okay? And that happens because the diaphragm falls and everything that's below the diaphragm gets out of the way. It pushes outward. And then when you squeeze to push the air out of your body, Squeeze with the intercostal muscles, the muscles of the rib cage. Squeeze here, like you're like you're squeezing a set of bellows. Squeeze there, and then you'll be able to move the air out of your body efficiently. Every time you take a breath, you want to take a breath like that. 
Now you could get away with taking more shallow breaths in other pieces, but in this etude, in number 28, if you don't take a really good, solid breath, you're going to run out of air before you're done. If you do run out of air before you're done, just stop. Take your breath and restart. Don't feel bad about it. If you're if you're a, a smaller person, if you're a, I, I don't know, there are a number of reasons why you wouldn't be able to take a breath that was efficient enough to make it all the way through this. Just stop, take your breath, and move on. Don't feel like you're uh, a bad person because you can't make these phrases. They're incredibly difficult, but it's important to learn to breathe well uh, and to uh, move the air properly out of your body. If you need help with this, talk to your band director and they'll be able to help you track two bands. Now, let's see what about the guy. Oh, yeah. So, in order to develop this ability to play these long phrases, what you need is about 15 to 20 seconds of air. And so, in addition to really concentrating on how you take a breath, you want to make sure that you're able to play long tones really seriously long time, 15 to 20 second long, long time. You need to be able to play in fortissimo because this whole etude is loud. And you need to be able to play them with an absolutely rock steady tone. That means that the muscles of your embouchure have to be well developed and the muscles of your body have to carry you through this long breath. And the only way to work on that is to play long time. So I recommend that you Take a really good breath, sit in front of a clock, see how long you can hold a really steady tone. Don't see how long you can hold a weak tone. Don't see how long you can go, because nobody cares to hear that. What you want is a really solid tone for 15 to 20 seconds, and then you'll be able to play this with And we can turn back down. Oh, yeah. So, one last thing about this A2. It does require you to make a move that's a little bit unfamiliar and awkward. And that move is from E flat to C. You have to be able to get your little finger to go across these keys really quickly and efficiently. Both of the times you have to do this, it's articulated. So, that's nice. But... That move is difficult and taxing. You have to have some muscles in your hand, and that's this muscle right here, in order to support your hand through that motion. I recommend using your wrist and forearm to do this instead of trying to move your little finger like that. That actually does hurt. That's not a lot of fun to do. And none of this is fun, but I oh, well, okay, it is fun. But when you make this move, it's much easier to make that move by moving your arm and wrist. Thanks for watching.